You know, it seems that all I do on this channel is show plushes and figures and statues of video game characters. But there is something I never really talk about. Can you guess? Yeah, the actual games these collectibles are based on. Luckily for you, I've got a treasure trove here. Let me introduce you to this little disc. A disc I technically should not even own. This is Sega's actual disc of files they brought to Tokyo Game Show in 2003 to present new announcements. It's totally legit, with Sega's logo in Tokyo Game Show actually printed onto the disc rather than sharpied on. I've had this in my collection for a while now, but didn't really know exactly how I wanted to share it with you. I figured I needed a little help. So allow me to do a second introduction to absolute bestie, Aaron from the Game Guy 1210 channel. Hey, what's poppin' players? I just flew in from the sewer level and boy are my arms tired. <laughs> For the eagle-eyed of you, or eagle-eared, Aaron's been on this channel a few times before, but he has since moved on to his own successful channel where he's made a favorite video of mine, buying a new PlayStation 1 game as recently as 2023. Oh yes I did, and being the master computer hacker that I am, I'm happy to help you uncover these rare Sega files. After all, I did learn from the best. <sighs> Alright, dope. Let's get this started. Hey, what's poppin' players? I'm a Sega collector. I call myself that because I've been collecting Sega and Sonic the Hedgehog merchandise for almost my whole life. A lot of my hardware, software, and collectibles were passed down to me by family. And because of that, I have a lot of vintage and very rare Sega-related merchandise not many people know about. So it's my job to talk about it. From video game spotlights, to retrospectives, and of course, reviews on figures and plushes, you can find it all here. So enough talking, let's get the ball rolling. Welcome to the Sega Collector. All right, let's get a few things out of the way first. If you're gonna ask us to dump these files, just give us a little bit of time here. Thankfully, there isn't really anything on here that's damaging to the Sega brand or necessarily something we haven't seen before. If anything, you're gonna see familiar things in a new light. But things take time to upload, and if stuff does get released, we'll make an update to this. There are a lot of files on this disc, as 2003 was an incredibly important year for Sega, which I'll get into much later. So we're gonna divide things up by sections. I imagine you all want to see the Sonic stuff first, so let's dive into that now. After popping the disc in a computer, we are greeted with the following folder structure. And look, it has all of our favorite consoles. Game Boy Advance, GameCube, PC, Xbox, and... Nah, just kidding though. It actually translates to multi-platform, and it's here where we'll find our coveted Sonic media. Diving further down the rabbit hole, we'll find a folder named Heroes, which if you haven't figured out by now, is all about the 2003 cult classic, Sonic Heroes. Inside, we have a high-res JPEG of the Japanese Sonic Heroes logo, rendered at about 300 dpi. <laughs> CDR from 2003 that's being played on an Xbox <laughs> connected through composite. Yeah, I think it is gonna... Plus, you're filming this <laughs> It's gonna look like fucking shit. Yeah, I guess it's There's gonna like look so many layers of compression. <laughs> I guess it's gonna look and then you're not gonna take great. that video and upload it to YouTube. Yeah. Now owning a disc like this is certainly an awesome piece of any true gamers collection, but my favorite thing about it is the incredible high quality assets and images included within. Unfortunately, due to the compression of the video editing software and YouTube, images will not seem nearly as crisp as looking at the original file, but we'll do our best to show this off. Hopping into a folder named Teams, we can see these awesome high-quality renders of Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. You can zoom really far in and view the individual textures of all the characters. It's awesome to see the blend of all the 2D and 3D art up close. It almost feels like we weren't supposed to see this level of detail. For our younger viewers out there, we used to play video games on these big CRT TVs and trying to make out any detail like this would have come across as a blob of blurry graphics. On the topic of blurry graphics, there are also some included screenshots from the game. There's a bit of aliasing here, so if I had to guess, I'd say it's from one of the console versions. Aaron, can you say that again? Dear, oh, I looked at this one. 
<laughs> Dear Sonic Heroes, guess what, Sonic, Sonic. Heroes? <laughs> I finally developed the ultimate weapon. In three days, I'll conquer the world. Think you can stop me? Sincerely, Eggman. Eggman. Signed it in cursive. How nice. Included in the multi-platform folder is a Poyo Poyo folder. The version being showcased here is Poyo Poyo Fever, which appeared on GameCube, Xbox, PS2, and even Dreamcast, making this game truly multi-platform. Now, if you've seen my video about forgotten Sega games on Game Boy, you know I'm a big fan of the GBA, and conveniently, a folder on that is up next. Inside contains some Sonic Battle assets. According to our resident Photoshop expert, Jason Disco, the following file is an EPS. Uh, I love these kind of files that are vector because they legitimately are the highest quality that you can get since they're vector and they're not raster. So it's just all a bunch of shapes, so no matter how much you zoom in, it's still... And you can move the mouse around and you're on like different parts of the... Yeah, yeah. so all the shapes that they use for the... Does he have a render, or does he have more to him as an image yes. than he does behind? Uh, he does. I think he's in a mask. Oh, interesting. Can you, can you pull him out of there? Like, can you move wow. him out of there? Wow. Um, hmm. I don't know if I can that's this. like unseen art. Maybe, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if there's a head-on shot of him. I don't know if I can release it. Can that you cut it? Mask. Oh, yeah. wow. That's awesome. That's crazy. He's in a mask somehow, but I don't know where. This was most likely used for printing maybe a poster or another advertisement. In addition to this file, we have some gameplay screenshots of Sonic Battle, which, while a little blurry for a Game Boy game, the quality of these pictures is actually pretty high quality. I think this is truly one of my favorite aspects of this disc, seeing so many things in such high quality. By the way, is Sonic Battle any good? It's your typical early 2000s Sonic shtick. Interesting plot, garbage gameplay. That sounds about right. Well, whether or not you feel Sega was making good Sonic games at this point, they were making other games, two of which are included in the GBA folder. One for Lilliput and another for Astro Boy. These folders are less hefty than the Sonic ones as they only include gameplay screenshots and Japanese logos. Still worth checking out, however. I wonder if these are earlier builds of the game, or if these screenshots are close to the final release versions of the games. Moving on to another Nintendo console, let's take a look at the GameCube folder. The GameCube folder is about the same size as the GPA folder and includes three separate folders for Sonic DX, Billy Hatcher, and Sakura Wars 3. The Sonic DX folder includes only screenshots of the game, but everything else looks like the final build to me. It's still worth showing off though. We've got to take the time to talk about Billy Hatcher here, because this was one of my favorite games when I was a kid. This folder also includes the Japanese logo and screenshots of gameplay. Interestingly, a lot of these screenshots show that Sonic is unlockable as a companion in the game. Fun fact, so is Knights. It's not a Sega game if Sonic isn't slapped in there somewhere. Or also nowadays, Kiryu from Yakuza. Sega loves to milk that action franchise. And speaking of action franchises, we have what looks to be artwork from Gungrave. Sega published a Gungrave game in 2002 based on the anime, but apparently were not involved for the sequel, Gungrave Overdose, released in 2005. Interesting to note, since these images were found in a folder named Gun OD. Man, I still need to finish that first Gungrave game. I remember it being a lot of fun. Sega Ages was a series of ports and re-releases for various home consoles. In this particular case, it's for the PS2. Because of the mixed bag of content located within, we're going to do a bit of a speed run here, so let's get into it. We've got pictures from Outrun, Afterburner, Gain Ground, Virtual Racing, and some weird baseball game that never came to the U.S. In the Xbox folder, there's only assets for one lone game, Sega GT. Now even though I'm a pretty big racing game fan, I have to admit, the most I know about the Sega GT franchise is that one game came bundled with JSRF on the original Xbox, and it plays a lot like Gran Turismo. 
The following are several screenshots. And finally, we have what everyone came for, horses. Seriously, lots of horses. Like big horses, anime horses, anime girls with horses. We've literally got it all in a folder called Derby Suku 3. This game has a lot of Photoshop files as well and very high quality. I didn't realize Sega had such a stringhold over the horse video game market. But that about wraps up all the content on this disc. It is fascinating being able to kind of step back in time with an item like this. Obviously, these games being promoted are all very much out of date today, but this was once the new thing, and these screenshots and images were once the very first of their kind. The hype of seeing these screen grabs in such high quality must have been mesmerizing back in the day. Collecting Sega is what I do, but something I never shed much light on on the channel is my love for so many Sega games. Owning a piece like this is incredibly special due to its professionalism. This wasn't meant for me, or for you, or for us, or, you know, anyone other than the few Sega employees working for the company in 2003, who were in charge of sharing this media for the very first time. 2003 was such an important year for Sega. It was their first big chance to show what they were going to do outside Sega hardware after the death of the Dreamcast in 2001. 2002 was honestly just a year of playing catch-up. 2003 was the big break, the big foray into new technology, and specifically represented a massive push for Sonic to stay as relevant as he was outside of Sega's own creations. In 2003, Sega fans, young and old, needed the files on this disc. The content, for as interesting or bizarre as it was, was giving a glimpse to the Sega faithful at the time that there were new horizons for the company just within reach. Of course we know how many of those games reviewed at the time of their release, but on this disc, there's a naive optimism found in it that I find beautiful.